Alright, uh, let's get back in frame here. Alright, so... Modified the door just a, just a little bit. Um, like I said, I went back and looked at Randy's video. Uh, I think it was the second or third, third episode that he had done. Kind of widened the door a little bit. Um, gave it more of that trapezoidal. Uh, however you want to look at it. Um, next thing I do is, is put the buttons there for the uh, for the door switch. Uh, <clears throat> and then the other thing I did was cut the hole in the center for the bubble. Uh, for that, I used the uh, uh, the kit supplied uh, bubble. <clears throat> Just as a just as a starting point, I haven't gone in and tried to uh, test fit the uh, clear bubble that uh, I got with the interior kit. Uh, so, like I said, moving along. Uh, the other issue. Let's talk about the door. There, flip around here. All right. So the door. When it's closed, it wouldn't open all the way with the door frame. You know, let's, there, let's get back into this. That's as far open as the door would come. So, let me get my finger out of the way, but basically it would only open to show half the, half the fucking door opening. Oh, excuse my language. You know, I was like, eh, it's kind of a poor design, but then when I realized in order to open it all the way you are up against the window oh, yeah let me get your frame there you're up against the window frame so I may have to do a custom door frame so I put strips for the new stop uh, and when I do the uh, that block that Randy gives you with the uh, interior kit I mean I'm gonna have to modify it so that it will seal this part, but allow the door to open there, right? Fingers out of the way. Uh, the other thing is, I made that the ugly stick. Uh, I gotta, I gotta sand it down and just touch up a, a couple of spots here with some filler. But uh, you know, that's kind of what you saw. So. Um, and I gotta clean this door up, man. This is just a, for some reason it was a rough, rough cast. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna fill this all in with the uh, Evercode anyway. You know, um, I joined a site on Facebook uh, for the Spindrift thing, and the guy, I have to go back and read, but he was talking about he makes, he makes the uh, the Continental. Uh, decal that goes on either side or above the windows, but I thought maybe I had read that they do the stripe so <clears throat> Before I fill it I got my fingers in there. So before I fill it what I may do is take some uh, tracing paper and Just trace where this line is take some measurements, you know that here, you know obviously it's a little little shorter distance here than say down here, but just to get the, the contour of the of the stripe. Uh, this I'm going to fill in with the Evercoat. Um, then the other thing is when I put the bubble in here, I'll see how bad of a seam I got around here. And I may do that, uh, I don't know what the hell Randy called it, the, the cold press or whatever. You know, you fill this up with the Evercoat while it's wet and then you put your, your piece in and let it just before it hardens, you pull it back out, and then it leaves the uh, leaves the seal kind of thing. But uh, so I'm gonna start working start working on this thing. There's a lot of cleanup to do on the uh, 3D print. I had sanded this down to the point where uh, it's somewhat smooth, but as you saw on the on the lower hole, you know it uh, still leaves a little bit of styration and. Uh, a little bit of work right here on this scene uh so all right just kind of moving on so that's it for now like i said 
I think I'm pretty happy with the door. So, all right. All right. So I went and I modified the front frame. Uh, so essentially what I had done was put the lid on and then traced this based on the uh, based on the top uh, part of the hull and then I have my arm in the way so basically I have a set of rasps which kind of ate through that pretty good like a wood chip through wood so uh, but so far looking good so when I start working with the seams then uh, I'll, I'll work with how this meets the top part of the hull and go from there so it's getting there um still working on the interior a little bit so all right, all right. working on my uh on the intakes here basically what i was doing was knocking out you know this is the way they come cast uh and this is the way you get them so what i had done uh, was I, you know, I sanded this flat to a point where these things were just a little bit wafers and I can knock them out, right, and then, you know, open up the holes. Uh, which is basically what I did with the bubble piece. <clears throat> However, I didn't take into account that there is a lip that those intake grills sit on. Right, and uh, they need to be sanded down thin uh, so that they fit in there fairly flush. So that's what I've been doing this morning. So I got them in there flush. Uh, the other thing is, I was yeah, fucking getting y'all crazy here. Alright, the other thing I was going to do is build a light box behind this thing, but if you can see this tab right here, this is the inside of the hull on the back. So the light box is actually going to be smaller uh, than what the intake grill is, unless I kind of incorporate it into the hull of the rear of the ship, which is something I may do. Um... I gotta think about it because what I wanted to do was stand make some depth to the light box uh, and then put the uh, the frosted uh, lens you know maybe about uh, five millimeter or so behind the grill just to look like it had some depth uh, so I gotta figure out how the hell to make that work um, so I don't know that's kind of where I'm at right now so uh, I'm gonna start building some light boxes um, while well, I'm at it, I'm not bitching, I'm just whining a little bit, but, you know, I don't know what would have made me believe that the, uh, this piece would have been fucking smaller than this piece, because I used this piece to cut the fucking hole in the top, and lo and behold, this piece went boop, straight through. So, I'm having to go in and just fill in, fill in some of the spots. Um, yeah. I fucking was surprised when I go to put the uh, the dome that uh, Randy sent actually just fell right through this thing. You know, I was like, God damn it. So, just a little bit set back. I'm whining. I'm whining. I'm allowed. I can whine. All right. So, till next. Alright, Larry back here. Uh, I've been slowly working on this thing. I had uh, ran into a snag. I really couldn't uh, get the damn thing solved. So I had to kind of work through that. My window over here wasn't lining up with the hall window. The window on this side was 
was lining up. So, you know, it took me a minute to figure it out. Uh, so I got it set. I have my stop in, you know, fucking pointer. Boop. Yeah, give me seasick. So there's a little, uh, the hull, it's got a little cut out here. So I have my, uh, I have a stop in here on that side. And then on this side, I got got a stop here. Had to make a little adjustment after you know I couldn't get this damn window lined up. And then uh, you see in there, dark. But anyway, uh, this side of the ship on the on the interior was a little bit low. Uh, again, the bottom of the window was lower than the hull, so I had to kind of. I beef it up and basically I just kind of built up a block of plastic to shim it up back there. Uh, so that that's that's all sitting pretty good. The other issue I see and when the hull, the top part of the hull goes up against take it out of here. I gotta start looking through this viewfinder when I'm doing this shit. So when the top part of the hull snags into the front cowl here and then it, it where it hooks I guess you could say it hooks into this and then it slides back and then it glues up against the seam the problem is this was I guess pushed out a little too much and so basically I put a little heat to it and kinda got everything back together so I got a little bit of a gap when I put the hull on about an eighth of an inch and then uh, I was talking with Randy during one of his Zoom meetings, and uh, I guess what he had done when he put this thing together, he just put it in clamps and squeezed it a little bit, and uh, everything was everything was working. Um, let's spin this around again. There you go. So I put some stops here on the back just to keep the uh, the interior in place so it doesn't move around now on me and then from there what I gotta do what I gotta do is do uh, if, you, if you've seen Randy's uh, build the windows this piece here and here should be a straight straight shot but what you got is an angle down from here to here and the same thing with this is it's not so <clears throat> I just I just hot glued this thing here to, to kind of give me uh, to hold it in place while I, I worked it um, so this this will come off right it's just hanging in there uh, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach glue this to this now that everything is kind of in the same plane and, and it's level, um, so then I'll glue this to the top hole, and then I'll uh, ever coat you know the seams here. Um, let me mention also because this this was part of my other problem why I couldn't get uh, things lined up. The top part of the hull was coming down and riding on this. So when I put the hull in place, it would shift the interior over. So I wound up taking down a lot of material right here. And also back up in here. And also back up in here. And the only reason I was able to see this was looking through the engine the back end part of the engine is I could see some contact points um, but I'm hoping hoping everything's good now uh, everything seems to be so alright next clip like I said I'm gonna take these out glue them to the hull and then uh, and then blend them in and then uh, I guess the glass will go into here so alright
And I guess the other thing I was going to show you is I, uh, I put the headlights in, or front forward lights, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I used, uh, I guess, a 3 16 brass tube, just got a small section, uh, and, and, and located it. Uh, man, this thing's so big here. Boop. So just going by the drawings that I got, uh, you know, you're coming down off this line, this imaginary line here, imaginary line here, and then you're just slightly above the uh, the antenna that's here, and that's that's how I kind of lined it up. You know, of course, uh, there's probably people out there, oh, it's out of place. You know what? Eh, who cares? Um, they're there. The other thing is with the hull is while I had the interior in, I was figuring up the center of gravity. So the center of gravity is somewhere right back out is somewhere right here. So my post, I'm going to drill a hole for my post uh, and then come up through that. Uh, my other concern was is this being PLA, um, you know, is this going to sag over time? So, you know, we had a discussion, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the group chat, I guess a couple of Sundays ago. And, uh, you know, I asked Randy, I says, well, what do you do for your yours? And he says he filled his bottom up with resin, which, you know, I don't have. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is add, back up, is add strip, you know, I got a I got about a two inch metal strip, so I'm gonna put one here, put one here, and then cross across that so that the post is actually supporting the metal, which is supporting the ship, which you know metal's attached to the ship, blah blah blah. So you know I don't want to have this thing, you know, over the years kind of have my post here and then have it the ship sag around the post. So. Uh, uh, that's the next thing I'm going to be working on uh, to get this because once I get this uh, I'm going to do a little more body work uh, I got some rust spots um, basically I skinned I skinned the uh, the PLA with some uh, that ever coat right just to get the lines out and then sanded it smooth same thing on the bottom uh, but I got a couple of rough spots Got a couple of rough spots right here, so the intent is to go back over this with the uh, with a skin of Evercoat, sand it down, and I'll give you the you know I'll show you the comparison here because this I haven't touched. This is still just a sanded PLA, um, and it's not so bad here, but it's when it gets down into here. It, 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 I couldn't get the rough texture out. Never, the more you sanded, the you know, the lines changed. You know, the way the way they printed it. You know, the lines are going this way, and then it was going this way, and then going this way. So <clears throat> you sand through one layer, you got the lines on the next layer. So, like I said, I'll put a, a skin of the Evercoat in the bad areas. Plus, I'll I'll I'm going to cover this line, this stripe here. The intent is that I'm going to fill it with the Evercoat and sand it down and then leave a faint line that'll that'll give me the guide to go back in and, and paint the stripe back in. Um, same thing with this. This is a pretty hefty groove right here. And I don't know if I bitched before, but you know, I can bitch again here. Uh, that's the bubble. Fumble. All, right. All right. So I don't know if I bitched before, but I'm bitching again. Um, that was the bubble, and uh, fucking thing is not the right size. So I got to do a little filling in, and that's what this is. I got to put another strip here. And then uh, I'll fill it with some ever, some ever coat. But uh, anyway, I'm done.
So, all right. Moving. All right. I figured I'd uh, just show the rough stages going through. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm filling in uh, the groove that they uh, gave you for the um, stripe, um, and also. This is the second go around with filling in the windows. Oh, get the pointer here. Essentially, uh, had to fill in the bottom gap and the top gap because the uh, the way the uh, thing was 3D printed, it didn't meet the corners. So, uh, getting there. Oh, and I got a thunderstorm rolling in. So. Uh, like I said, this is the second go around. Um, it's looking a lot better. Uh, can't get in there to show you, but it was blending in fairly well. Uh, you know, all sides. So, um, and then this thing here was a pretty hefty, deep groove. So, like I said, I don't mind showing you the rough stages because everybody, everybody will uh, they'll show you the before and after. And it's like you don't see the in-between shit. I mean, it takes a little bit of work to, uh, you know, to, to make it look good. So, but this is the intern stage this year. So, all right, I'll give you, a, I'll give you another look once I get it all done. Um, yeah, some of the styration did uh, sand out. It, it actually feels good. So, um, I got a little bit of a, a groove here. This is where the. Uh, the whole pieces came together. If you remember, this was a piece, this was a piece, that was a piece, and of course this was. So you're looking at uh, four different pieces here. So, all right, all right. So, here we are back on this Saturday night here. Um, this is about the third iteration of uh, fill and sand and fill and sand. So the windows are looking pretty good. I just got like one more to do. Uh, these are pretty uh, pretty well covered. I could feel just a slight indentation, and like I said, I was going to leave a slight indentation <clears throat> just so that I can uh, go back and uh, follow the strike. The other thing I've been working on is this. It's trying to put a an edge. Let me get you back in focus. I'm trying to put an edge back on this thing instead of having it rounded and, and blunt. So I've been building that back up. Um, this, I went back in and I'm starting to fill in the damn hole because uh, the bubble is not the same as the other bubble, which it should have been. So having to go back in and fill it. Basically what I did was I super glued the first ring of styrene in the hole, uh, checked it, still a little more, ran another second bead of styrene, glued that in. Uh, what I'll do, <coughs> I gotta let this sit, it's still a little gummy, um, and I'll bevel it so that the bubble you know, has a nice tight seal. Uh, the other issue I was having was the frickin', uh, because this is a three piece, one, two, three, this thing kept cracking as I was working on it. So what I'd done was I glued down a, or epoxied in a uh, uh, 16th inch thick uh, piece of styrene glued it to the PLA and then went in and took the Evercoat and just filled it in just to make it uh, just to make it you know strong so <clears throat> another one it's it's coming along uh, yeah like I said this this is coming along I like this you know this edge so like I said I don't mind showing you the uh, the rough the roughness you know, everybody shows you the, uh, the before and after, so. Uh, the other thing I did was I ran Evercoat over this. I gotta sand it down. This thing here was so bad with the, uh, the lines on the, the 3D print, you know, the styration. 
so I just I just gave it a uh, a coat. <clears throat> I call it a skin, and then I'll sand it down. Um, then we should be good to go. Uh, you know, I guess uh, once I get that, I'll primer it, see what it looks like, and then uh, the real heavy anything that's heavy that needs to be filled, I'll use the Evercoat. If it's light, then I'll use the uh, uh, the the red putty, and then you know. Once I'm happy with that, final coat of primer, and then we start putting the lights in it. All right? All right. Till the next, uh, till the next All pit right. stop. Larry back here with you. It's a couple of days after the last little uh, shot. Uh, I got, I got this pretty well worked out. You know, it fits the, fits the bubble pretty good. Uh, put a second coat of. Ever coat on just to get this whole damn thing smooth. It just kind of had a it had a divot in it where this went down and then back up again. So uh, I gave this thing a whole coat of uh, glazing putty, as you can see by the uh, you know the red left over, uh, and you can see the get in there. You can see the little deep striations and some divots and low spots. Um, all in all, it's looking pretty good. Uh, I had a, this thing here is, is a pain in the ass. I keep, because of all the sanding and the work that I'm doing, it just keeps giving me a little crackage. Um, on the front here. So I'm cleaning, uh, getting this a little crisp. So I've built this up. Actually, you can see where how much I've built it up. This was rounded over. I didn't like it. Um, I was looking at uh, some pictures of uh, uh, Randy Randy's spindrift. In fact, he uh, I was texting him uh, this morning, and he was showing me some of the stuff up close on his. So I was happy. So a little more work there. Um, set that aside. And drop it. Well, let me get you back in here. All right. So doing the same thing on the front here, cleaning this up. This had a flat spot in it, like you wouldn't believe, like right, get you in the camera. This had a flat spot in it. You know, it'd come around and it would just flatten out. Just, uh, so filled it up a little bit. Uh, this is like the second iteration. I gotta sand it down. Like I said, I don't mind showing the rough patches cause it'll, it'll show you how we got here. Um, and what I'm doing here is I built this up with the, the balsa fiberglass and a couple of pop sticks. I have a plate. In fact, uh, Hannah. So I have a plate here. And it's going to fit in like that. And that'll line up with the hole that I drilled in the bottom of the ship. All right. Um, the idea is I'm going to sandwich this piece. I got to cut it. Uh, there's my mark. So what'll happen is this will come in from the bottom. I'll have a washer. The hole will sit on the washer. The lock nut will hold. Uh, the washer up against the hull. This piece here, well, this nut, will have a washer here and sandwich there. So these two nuts will sandwich the bottom of the hull with the top of the plate and hold this whole thing in in place. Um, my concern is, like I said, the PLA will get soft. You know, you get it heated, you get it, you know, it, it becomes, I don't know if you want to say like fiberglass over, you know, time. I don't want the thing to sag. So I'm giving it a, a pretty sturdy base. This, <coughs> um, I got, I'm going to put a couple more strips here. And basically what I'm going to do is just overlap, you know, from here to here. I'll cover it like that. And then this whole thing will get glued into place. I'll just epoxy the hell out of it and uh, and that'll hold 
that piece. There's still plenty of clearance between this and the bottom of the floor. Um, so, and that's kind of where I'm at. So, alright. Till the next clip, we'll see how that goes. Uh, let me back up and get this whole thing in here. All right, Larry, back here. Uh, I've been working on this bender tier for the last I don't know a few weeks. Well, I take it back. We went to Wonderfest, so nothing got done that weekend. Came back from Wonderfest with a crud that put me down for an entire week, literally. So nothing got done. So I'm back out here uh, working on it a little bit. So before I left, I shot uh, the whole thing with a uh, primer filler, a couple of coats. Um, I had done the same thing to the forward part and started several iterations of, as you can see, sanding, filling, sanding, filling, sanding. Uh, basically, uh, what I want is I wanted a faint line where the stripe was but I didn't want to have that big deep groove so I used uh, the Evercoat Whoop. Evercoat Mr. Cooper put me onto that stuff and uh, so I've been using that uh, to fill in you know the large uh, large uh, uh, I don't know you can't call them seams just large large grooves so uh, for the most part, it's pretty smooth. Um, yeah, let me get back out here. This thing here, like I said, it's three pieces. You know, you had this piece, this piece, and then the front. Well, <clears throat> you know, uh, before I even primered it, yeah, I could, you know, I, I was always feeling for that seam and, and the contour. And if the contour made a nice blend from one, or, you know, one, one, one facet to the other. And uh, I, I, I had an area here that I had to knock down because it basically, it felt like it came out and then went like this. So I knocked that down, you know, and of course you're, you're digging into several layers of the, the, the print. But uh, so <clears throat> for the most part, I got that pretty smooth. The windows, I'm happy, you know, with the, the crispness of the edge. Uh, you had to straighten that out. Um, and then Mr. Cooper sent me pictures of his again in uh, one of the after the zoom chat uh, so I've been playing with the door kind of kind of getting it straightened out it's still uh, kind of looks still a little wonky but uh, I'll work on it uh, the other part I worked on is getting this edge getting it back to an edge because it was rounded and I wasn't happy with it so let me uh, let me take this off set this down uh, and uh, uh, like I said several iterations uh, gotta, I gotta whoop, follow my finger uh, I got a little bit here I gotta clean up there's a, a divot uh, but for the most part it's I'm pretty happy with that edge uh, I got my lights filled out and <clears throat> I do this yeah. follow the camera don't get sick close your eyes uh, I do this you know because like there's there's a blemish here um, but actually it says low and it's it come it rounds and then it kind of like it's got a flat spot so I'm gonna go in and just fill in like that area this one's not as bad uh, this is a little gizmo divot little divot part of the seam you know as this goes across and this is all rough right here uh, it's a divot divot here uh, back here same thing but anyway I do this uh, you know go back here but I do this as I as I fill it you know you start inspecting it and you see you know areas you need to work on and it allows you to just go back and work on that area rather than uh, guessing second guessing or uh, you know filling in something you don't need to and then it creates another problem and you're you know chasing yourself around 
spin around and around so I got a little bit here it's not it's not a it, you know round it's it's like round flat round so I gotta work on that uh, you know back here uh, for right now it's it's shaping up pretty good uh, I'm kind of bumming that I didn't get further along because I really wanted to have this ready for Pam's con which is actually next weekend and this ain't gonna happen uh, now what I done here uh, I can't remember you know I, I already took the video off the camera so I can't even go back and look at it but uh, uh, I don't remember if I shot this before but basically what I did was I put a plate on the bottom of the hull and I did that so that it would distribute the weight you know because I'm gonna be <sighs> everything is gonna be setting right on that point actually I'll have a washer here but uh, let me stop the camera and then I'll be back so all the weight with this rod is gonna be sitting on that washer now you say oh that's not good but anyway let me let me explain let me explain let me get it all right so what I have is I have that washer on the outside of the hole I have a washer underneath this plate sandwiching yeah sandwiching it's sandwiching between the hull and this plate and then I had my welder do a little zap zap and uh, weld that washer to this plate so that it doesn't slide around on me and then there'll be a lock nut here holding the whole thing tightly together um, and then once I figure out the uh, the cockpit then I'll, I'll make the cut here um, like I said, it's a lot of weight that this thing is going to be supporting, you know, and uh, that cockpit weighs about 25 pounds. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Uh, it probably weighs about 4 pounds. Um, so a lot of weight going to be sitting on this thing, and I wanted it distributed throughout this. Now this looks a little hokey, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the Evercoat, and I'm going to overlay it, you know, and it essentially fill, fill this area right here in follow the finger uh, fill this area right in here so it, there'll be a layer of uh, the fiberglass over this so that shouldn't go anywhere it should not go nowhere anyway so that's what I've been working on um, you know got a lot of things figured out now now it's just a matter of uh, finishing up all these little sub assemblies and my messy bench there's my interior components. You know, I already, I already freaking washed these damn things off once before, and I got all this crap I got to sand off. So uh, I think that's tomorrow's job because I'm fucking tired today. Excuse my language. Um, so what I'll do is I'll clean up the seats. Uh, you know, wash them off, clean them up, get them mounted into that and then go back and I want to put a couple of uh, least figures in here uh, just to kind of give it a sense of scale and uh, you know, I have fat fingers here so I, I kind of left off uh, but I had Valerie Fitzhugh this is supposed to be Mark you know gave him a little crew cut uh, and his the figure head was a little too uh, the, the wavy ass hair and then I got a you know Finish Betty. Uh, not very good at painting figures, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I had uh, he was supposed to be Barry, but I haven't been able to find a dog, so I may leave him out. Uh, and then I don't have any figures for uh, Steve or uh, what's his name? Oh, God. God, I can't think of the co-pilot. Don, Don, come on, Don, 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 Don. Anyway, uh, I don't have a figure for Don, so they might be out reconnoitering. So these guys will be in the ship, just to kind of give it a sense of scale, but uh, we'll go from there. All right, so that's that for this update right now. And uh, let me say we're making headway. You know, here's my wires for my, my headlights. So, yeah, we're getting there. All right.
All right. <clears throat> so I have uh, I rewired the uh, the roof light for the passenger compartment. Um, I got rid of the uh, six LED bulbs that I had in top, um, and I had I had done that originally because what I had done. Uh, this back up about four or five years ago whenever I started this kit. I had run a strip of LED around the perimeter and I thought that was going to be enough. Uh, then I glued it on top of the uh, passenger ceiling and realized it was not enough. So then I added the six LED lights that uh, I ripped out. So um, and this is quite bright, so this is 12 volts. Um, and boom. So let me let me just throw the roof on it, and I'll show you. Show you what it's looking like. So it, uh, it's a lot brighter than it was with just the uh, strip going around the perimeter. So. Uh, so, all right. So another thing down. Uh, all I'm gonna do is glue the light blocks. Yeah, the light blocks. The light block. Let's try that again. I'm gonna glue the light box to the top of this, and then call that done. Um, and I've already rewired the cockpit, uh, so let me bring that up here. All right. So this is the the pieces that comprise of the uh, uh, the hallway lighting. Uh, I built the light box uh, with the, the LEDs. Randy Cooper provides this. Uh, Milky uh, back uh, backlighting or whatever. And then this is just uh, one of his uh, transparencies. So it kind of goes like that, and then on top, and then and then lights. So getting there. One more thing down. So I'll get this uh, glued together and and put in the put in the hallway. So, All right. so what I've done is gotten rid of the uh, magnet wire. Um, the intent is everything is going to run. Oop, get back up here. Everything is going to run to this side, and then I'm going to go down. Get up here. I'm going to go down up underneath the uh, floor from this side of the uh, hull so I can avoid the uh, the door um, so just wired up everything from underneath and those little uh, control I don't know whatever the hell you want to call them those, those little control gadgets that are on the uh, on the counters so like I said everything can go here nothing is connected uh, it's just open uh, I'll group these wires together with the uh, with the uh, console gizmos, and then the cockpit. Everything, like I said, everything will come over onto this side here. So, uh, so I think that's it for tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, I'll I'll start wiring things together. So, go from there. All right. See ya. All right, another night working on this. Uh, this is the uh, the lighting light box for the bubble. Uh, so <clears throat> built the light box. So I have a ribbon of red LED all the way around. Three strips here. The intent is I'm going to uh, clean this up and then frost it. So then that'll go over that, and then this will go over that. This is the part that uh, Randy Cooper supplies with his, uh, I guess, the exterior kit. So, and we have failure. Ah, let me let me plug it up, and then I'll. Power yeah, up. one of the little people tripped over the power cord. So, and that looks washed out. But I can tell you that is very red. Um, 
and it's very lit. So the intention, like I said, is to frost the uh, clear clear piece over that. Uh, you know, scuff it and and frost it. I have uh, some Krylon frosted gloss finish. Um, let's see how it looks when it's toned down. So I'll give you another shot after that. But uh, yeah, we're moving along. I'm looking pretty good. So till the next thing. All right. <clears throat> So if you remember, this was a clear sheet of uh, PET, and uh, I used some 600 grit wet and dry sandpaper, and then applied uh, this Krylon messy bench here. Applied uh, several coats of this, both sides. And uh, and it really toned it down, so you don't see the hot spots. And that's the way she's gonna look. We are running at nine volts. So, all right. So that's it for now. All right, so cutting my pieces out for my uh, light box on the uh, intake and uh, exhaust grills, if you want to call them that way. Um, my thinking is I'm gonna have the back plate, and then I'm gonna build this thing up about uh, 20 centimeters or so, and then put another piece, and then on the outside I'll have the clear piece that will all fog, um, you know, sand down and fog like I did with the uh, with the bubble, uh, just to give it some depth. And this will kind of be layered, you know. Uh, this will be, like I said, the back piece. I have the light, uh, and then on my walls I'll have, you know, the light facing in. <clears throat> then this piece is going to go uh, just down deep enough into the well uh, to uh, cover the height of the uh, the light and then what I'll do is I'll cut this out so this will become a frame for the depth and then I'll put this over it <coughs> and then uh, and then like I said leave I don't know probably maybe five millimeter or so for uh, you know just some depth so that when you look through the grill uh, you don't see, you know, here, let me, let me, you don't see something like that, you know, you, you see it step back a little bit. Uh, anyway, that's, that's my thinking. Um, while I'm at it, <coughs> I haven't sanded this thing down yet, but what I found was, uh, you know, when Randy had cast these, if you flip this over and put it down on the, you know, on your flat work surface and then sand it and sand it to the point where the holes shine through then you get your thickness that fits into the ship uh, you know the recess the, the the pieces in the ship for the girls are recessed and they're recessed enough like if you sanded this thing down it'll sit flush so uh, like I said I haven't sanded these things yet uh, just kinda moving along here so alright let me get uh, let me get a couple of these built now. All right, so uh, I just have the uh, the bottom built and uh, you know the sidewalls. Like I said, this is a uh, this is 20, 20 millimeter, and I'm not <laughs> not an advocate of uh, the metric system, but it's just easier to work with on my uh, on my ruler here. You know, I can I can do quick divisions. You know, rather than said, oh, it's three sixteenths or fifteen thirty seconds or some bullshit like that. But uh, anyway, I digress. So, <clears throat> like I said, what uh, the intent is, uh, what I'll do is I'll put the lights in, and then I'll put one on its side. You know, put one on its side. Come on, cooperate. 
So I'll have one in the side like that, and then I'll put the other frame down that deep, and then, oop, let me get you in front of here, keep looking past the damn viewfinder. So, like I said, I'll have, have this in down to the depth where the light is, and then cut the center out of this. So this will become a frame and give this thing some rigidity. And then uh, I'll have my clear piece. Uh, where the hell is it? I'll have my clear piece probably set down another, uh, you know, where I can leave about five millimeter or so, and that'll just give me some depth. Yeah, I don't have the other things cut out yet. That'll give me some depth so that when you look into the grill, you just don't see a, you know, a flat, uh, you know, flat surface behind uh, the hole in the grill. So it'll look like it's got a little depth. Anyway. So that's kind of <clears throat> where I'm at right now. I uh, I have I put it together with super glue. Uh, I scored the the corners just so I can get around the bend. So I super glued as I went around, and now I got the the five minute epoxy in there, kind of solidifying them. Um, so I guess I'll go uh, mow the grass while this stuff's drying. I got things to do, so. That's it for the for right now on the light boxes. Oh, and by the way, I bought one of these gizmos, and let me tell you, it makes life so much easier. Uh, I had a hard time finding it. Uh, the guy over at Spruver, yeah, Spruverse, Phil, I guess, told Lou over at uh, Aztec Dummy, and I've seen them use it, and I'm like, holy shit, that's pretty slick. But uh, you know, it probably took me a couple weeks to find one of these things, and I guess they're no longer. <laughs> No longer uh, produced. There are different versions of them, um, you know, not frozen, but uh, I'm telling you, this thing makes freaking life easy. I traced out my, I traced out my pieces, and what do I have two, I had, I had two, three, yeah, I had two back, you know, two, uh, two plastic and one clear, so. Three, I had three, six, nine. I had twelve pieces to cut, and honestly, God, it took me probably just as much time to cut them out as it did to trace them. That thing is sweet. It's a little pricey, um, but I'm telling you, it probably would have taken me a good couple of hours to cut all that shit out by hand. Um, you know, with you know, with an exacto. Uh, so, I mean, this thing's got a it's got a little blade and it vibrates like crazy. Uh, I didn't, I didn't cut my, let me get that thing down. I mean, I didn't cut myself, but what I had when I was, when you're pushing a button, it's a little awkward. When you push the button, my finger was resting up against this thing and that thing vibrates so fucking quick. Uh, it, it's, it gives you a little tingle like you got shocked or something. I'm like, holy shit. But anyway. Uh, like I said, there's different versions of these things out there. I was, I was, as I was looking for one, uh, I knew I had seen these work. Like I said, on Spruverse and uh, with Lou over there at Aztec Dummy, and I was like, okay, let me have one. But Home Depot actually sells a, you know, a China version, so I'm, I gotta imagine it works just as well. So, anyway, uh, if you have the opportunity, add one of these to your arsenal of hobby tools and uh, like I said it'll cut cut this stuff down time wise tremendously um, anyway all right let me get off my soapbox I got things to do so that's where we're at right now all right so I got the board back from Ralph uh, this is running with LED strips and I asked him to change the fade in and fade out uh, just a little bit slow it down before it was a little too fast uh, so let me talk about customer service because all right I got the board back from Ralph after my uh, my screw up. I initially set this thing up with LED 
bulbs and I didn't like it. So I changed everything over to an LED strip. And when I plugged in the board, I was kind of disappointed that the damn thing didn't work. Then I realized my dumbass had uh, changed the conditions. So I emailed Ralph, and this is good customer service, because I emailed Ralph on a Saturday, like an early Saturday. Saturday afternoon, he emails me back and says, yeah, he can make the modification to send the board back. So I sent the board back, and he changed it over. Uh, I don't know what changed transistors. Wow, what the hell he did. But he made it so that I, it'll work off an LED strip. And I asked him to slow down to fade in and fade out because uh, the bulb rate uh, board was just a little too fast. I thought. So anyway, I get the board back yesterday. Actually, I take it back. I got it back Friday. Today's Sunday. So, and I just got it wired up right now straight to, uh, actually it's running on 9, almost 10 volts. And I'm liking this. So, alright, so we can move forward. But this is just a taste of the board control from Tenet Controls. So, he can do it either way. He can do it up, uh, you know, for LED strip, or he can do it for the LED bulb. So, uh, it is possible. So, thank you, Ralph. Alright, so this is what it's looking like with the uh, back wall. I forgot to have it last time. So, uh, I know it's got a little flicker, but that's the camera, right? You see it? Because I'm looking at it as a camera, and I don't have that flicker, right? Uh, so, no, I'm like annoyed it's looking like. back here with you on this late June and I have it wired all the lights are connected with the exception of the uh, board so this is gonna be my light test but as you can see everything's lit that I have connected. I still have the cross piece put here. Uh, that'll be like uh, one of the last things I put in uh, because I got to get the seats in. That'll you know once I get it situated in the in the hull, uh, then I'll put it in. But that's a fucking wire mess. damn glue hairs so uh, you can see in pretty good right now and that's what it's looking like slowly getting there all the pieces are fitting so I think I can just show you. So that'll be the view. That'll be the view. So all my winkies and blinkies. Alright, so the next time you see this, it should be sitting in the hole, which is my messy bench down there. Still got some work to do to it. So, alright.